What's up guys, King Epic here. So if you're watching this video, you're probably planning or considering a trip to Thailand and are curious about the adult entertainment scene. You've seen all the Thailand nightlife videos on YouTube, you've heard the tales, you've read the stories on forums or in telegram groups, and now you're eager to dive into the nightlife that puts cities like Bangkok and Pattaya on the global map for partying and especially for a single man. Now, before we dive into the details, I want to share with you a perhaps very useful mindset when it comes to your Thailand trip. Treat it as an experiment. You see, watching more and more videos can make it seem as if this whole Thailand thing is super complex and needs long-term planning. It should be this perfect, life-changing experience. And while planning is useful, pulling the trigger is equally as important. Taking action is the only way for you to gain real world experience. A hot girl means nothing if you haven't seen what she looks like. An awesome night of partying means nothing if you haven't experienced it. To put all that you've watched or read online into context, you must take action. And often, the sooner you do that, the sooner you upload that new information into your brain to put it to use. So that's why I say don't make your first Thailand trip into this big deal that needs to be so life changing or planning to move to Thailand before you have visited at least once. Just go. Limit your time, limit your budget. That way you limit your risk and then you have your little Thailand experiment. And with new real world experience, with that data, that's something you can work with moving forward. All right, that's it. So let's get into the details. Uh, the adult entertainment scene in Thailand is really a magnet for single males from around the globe. It's vibrant, it's diverse, and let's face it, it's pretty infamous. Before you plunge headfirst into the allure of neon lights and exotic dances, there are some things you should know. And in this video, I will give you that ultimate guidance to navigating the landscape. Thailand's nightlife isn't simply about just go-go bars or adults-only entertainment. It's a thrilling blend of night markets, street food, clubs, discos, and indeed a rather conspicuous adult scene. The streets buzz with energy, uh, you know, you have lots of tourists, you have street performers, you have street stalls, and of course locals who are also out to enjoy the night. However, we know what you're here for. You've probably got questions about the bar girls, the go-go bars, the, well, special massages. We'll get into all of that, but first, let's get something straight. Thailand is not just an adult Disneyland. This is a country with rich cultural history and traditions that really deserve this respect. It's important to remember that behind the facade of the adult entertainment scene, there are real people making a living. Some enjoy the trades, others not so much. And as a visitor, it's crucial to show respect and kindness towards everyone you meet. Now let's address the elephant in the room. And yes, the adult entertainment in Thailand can feel like it's oozing from every corner, especially in certain parts of Bangkok, Pattaya, and of course, Phuket as well. The land of smiles certainly earns its name with its friendly locals. And yes, many of those smiles can indeed be found in beer bars, go-go bars, or vibrant nightclubs. Does that make it bad? Absolutely not. The scene is part of Thailand's cultural fabric, but it's important to approach it with understanding and respect. Finally, let's get rid of the misconception about the working girls. I mean, contrary to what some might think, not every woman in a bar or every woman on the street you see or in the club is part of the adult industry. It's important to remember this and approach any situation with respect and understanding. In this video guide, I'll cover all the details that you're probably curious about. I'll discuss everything from uh, how to behave in a bar 
to how to spot and avoid scams. And of course, I'll also talk about prices. So stick around, grab a beer, and let's navigate the thrilling journey of Thailand's adult entertainment scene together. Remember, we're here to have a respectful, safe, and fun exploration. So let's keep it that way. Thailand Nightlife 101, this is where we start. All right, now that we've covered somewhat of the basics, let's delve deeper into the rabbit hole, the charismatic world of Thailand's nightlife. Thailand's night scene is a bag full of entertainment options. You've got the bars, clubs, go-go bars, pubs, massage parlors, and of course, you cannot neglect the night markets. And each offers a different experience and a unique flavor of the land. Whether you're a first-timer or a seasoned veteran, it's good to familiarize yourself with what's on offer. So let's start with the bars. Uh, these are your regular watering holes. You can find them just about everywhere. On walking streets, inside malls, bordering the beach, and even tucked in some quiet alleys. These are your go-to places for a chill night of drinking and, you know, a little bit of lighthearted conversation. You will find locals, expats, and fellow tourists here. Many bars employ local women, and they're known as bar girls, to serve drinks and keep guests entertained. Here's a friendly tip. If you buy a girl a drink, those are called lady drinks. She will hang around for longer and chat with you, and she also earns commission off that drink. Just remember, these girls are there to do business, so keep it respectful, and remember, a no means no. And not every girl you talk to has to go with you. Quite the opposite is the case. Next up, we have the nightclubs. If you're looking for something, you know, more intense, the nightclubs will be your jam. Thailand and especially cities like Bangkok and Pattaya, Phuket, boast some really world-class clubs with great DJs, impressive light shows, and a pumping crowd. Here you can really rub shoulders with the young and wealthy of Thailand in some of these clubs. In other cases, just with fellow tourists, and yes, many, many, many working girls in most of these clubs. It's a pulsating high-energy environment that kicks into gear after midnight, and some of the after-hour clubs, for example, one that I could name that is very popular in Bangkok is Penny Black, that usually starts after 2 a.m. So again, keep your wits about you, and remember to respect the women. Next up, you've probably heard about the go-go bars. These are unique to Southeast Asia. Think of go-go bars as a more vibrant version of regular bars, kind of a mix between bars and strip clubs. Here we will find girls dancing around poles in bikinis or sometimes less uh, Bangkok crazy house. They're not wearing anything. There's usually no cover charge, but drinks can be pricier because you're experiencing a show. We'll go into more details about the workings of these establishments in the upcoming chapters, so hang on for that. Next up, of course, when talking about Thailand, you've probably heard about the massage parlors. If you're tired from a day of, let's say, your sightseeing or from a previous night of partying, you might want to unwind with a traditional Thai massage. There's a wealth of massage parlors all over the country. However, not all offer just a bag rub and a foot massage. Special massages are quite common in Thailand, but of course, not every massage parlor offers these services. So if your interest is make sure you're uh, entering the right place. You know, so I'll talk about this in more detail in upcoming chapters, but don't assume that every massage place you go to, even the upscale ones, offer happy endings because they don't. And lastly, night markets. Okay, this isn't really part of the adult entertainment industry, but I'm mentioning them because they're awesome. Uh, night markets offer, you know, a sneak peek of Thai culture, of street food, of shopping, of entertainment. Some night markets, uh, like the ones in Pattaya, they have open-air beer bars. And these, each of these options that I've mentioned offer a different flavor of Thailand's nightlife. Whether you choose to check out, you know, a bar or a night market, or you just want to go to a nightclub, it really depends largely on your mood, your interest, the time of the night or the day in your level of comfort. In the upcoming chapters, I'll dig deeper into each one of these, focusing specifically on how to maximize your enjoyment while keeping things safe and respectful. So drink up, we are just getting started. So let's go get deeper into the understanding of the bar scene. Now that we've kind of, you know, 
talk basically about the nightlife landscape in Thailand. It's important to dive deeper into the bar scene as a starting point. So trust me, this is a little more complex than grabbing a pint at your local pub back home. Um, Thailand's bar scene, especially in areas popular with tourists, function on a rather unique business model. Because most bars hire women, I've mentioned before that they're called bar girls, to effectively lure in customers and keep the booze flowing. Yes, they're easy on the eyes and would even sit to chat with you. But you have to always remember that they're not just doing it for fun because they're working, they're trying to make money. There are different types of bars. The beer bars, for example, these make up the majority of bars in Thailand's tourist tops, like uh, Pattaya or Phuket. Or, for example, in Bangkok, areas like Nana, uh, Soy Cowboy. Uh, they are laid back, oftentimes open air setups with pool tables, bar stools, and friendly vibes. Bar girls here are usually dressed somewhat casually. They sit and chat, or they play bar games with you, and generally keep you company as long as you keep them buying drinks. And those drinks, as I've mentioned before, they are known as lady drinks. And they're priced slightly higher, oftentimes significantly higher than your drink. Because basically you're paying for uh, a girl's company and for the entertainment. And if you talk to the girl and hang out with her and you're enjoying her company and want to leave with her before her shift ends, you'll have to pay the bar fine. And the bar fine is basically a, a fee that you pay to the bar for taking away the employee, the girl. Next up, we have the go-go bars, and they are slightly pricier versions of the beer bars. Uh, go-go bars, they, fe they feature you know, women in bikini or sometimes not wearing anything at all. On, they do a sexy performance on stage. And here, the bar fine and the lady drinks tend to be more expensive. But of course, then the, the ambience, the entertainment, they're really hard to beat. Having fun? Well, play it right. Uh, enjoying the bar scene and engaging with Bar girls can be a great experience, providing you play it cool and respectful. So here are some simple, very basic do's and don'ts for you. Be polite. Just because these girls work in the adult industry doesn't mean they're not worthy of basic courtesy, okay? Pay what you order. If you offer a lady a drink, you're expected to pay for it. It's not just, hey, do you also want to drink something and you have to pay for it yourself? Uh, no, that would be... Uh, a dumb move. <laughs> Demean or insult girls, those will be a don't. This should go without saying, but disrespecting the women can land you in trouble or at the very least make you uh, a pariah at the bar, at the very least. And another one, and this has more to do uh, with, with an ego thing, don't fret over rejections. Bar girls are free to choose who they entertain. If she says no, respect it and move on. Whether that's just, you know, she doesn't want to sit down with you or she doesn't want to go and leave the bar with you, accept it. The pricing for drinks, lady drinks and bar fines, they vary from place to place. But as a general rule, anticipate spending anywhere from 100 to 200 baht for your drinks, 150 to 250 for lady drinks and 300, even beyond a thousand for the bar fines. And also remember, if you're buying lady drinks, expected to tip as well now this might seem expensive but hey where else can you experience nightlife like thailand's enjoying the evening have fun but remember to stay polite and respectful next up i'll dive deeper into the world of gogo bars so let's get started the charm of gogo bars all right it's time we talk about the gogo bars these places are a whole different beast compared to your traditional bars. If you've never experienced a gogo bar, you are in for a lively experience. Gogo bars for the uninitiated are essentially strip clubs with somewhat of an Asian twist. And here's how it works. When you walk in, you'll see a bunch of ladies, usually in bikini outfits, dancing on a stage, and a crowd of people watching, drinking, and generally having a ball. It sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, there are a few things you should know. Firstly, the price. It's worth noting that gogo bars can be a bit more expensive than your average beer bars. There's usually no entrance fee, but the drinks inside will cost a pretty penny. A beer might set you back anywhere from 150 to 200 baht, while a lady drink can cost between 150 to 200 baht. 
it's a part and parcel of the more exciting atmosphere and the entertainment. Secondly, as you can guess, the girls here are also working for the bar, similar to the bar girls we spoke of earlier, but with a more risky job description. Many of them are dancing on stage while others are sitting around waiting for someone to buy them a drink and have a conversation. If you fancy one of the girls, you can talk to the the waitress or the, the woman in charge, usually called Mama-san, and you know, you can offer the girl to buy to get a drink and she'll come and join you and have a conversation, sometimes sitting on your lap or doing a little show. But here's where it gets interesting. If you want to take one of the girls out of the bar, say for a date or for the night, you absolutely can, but you will need to pay a bar fine. A bar fine is essentially compensation for the bar losing one of the workers for the evening. And bar fines in Gogo Bar is generally higher, ranging from 600 to 2000 but it really depends on the location, the girl and the time of the night, of course. So remember, it pays, it pays to remember, even after you've paid the bar fine, you're expected to negotiate a tip with the girl for her company. It's best to clear this up upfront, what you want to do uh, and how long, and that helps you avoid confusion and conflict and also disappointment later on. And finally, don't make the mistake of thinking uh, these girls are there just for your entertainment. They're human beings doing a job and to deserve your respect and kindness. So make sure they're smiling, having fun, dancing, you know, whatever. But that's because it's their job. They're trying to earn money. Never forget that. So in summary, gogo bars are fun and exciting part of Thailand's nightlife. They can be a bit trickier to navigate than your average bars. As long as you keep your wits about you and you act respectful and you're ready to splash out a little bit of cash, you're in for a good time. Next up, we're going to veer slightly off course and address a different kind of entertainment that many tourists look for in Thailand, the infamous massage parlors. So keep watching, you don't want to miss this. Time for the part you're probably wondering about, the world of massages in Thailand. If you're expecting a straightforward tale of back rubs and foot massages, you might be in for a surprise. I mean, Thailand is renowned for traditional massages, traditional Thai massages, a therapeutic blend of stretching and deep tissue points that really leave you relaxed and rejuvenated for the best part. These massages are offered in countless massage parlors across the country. Clean, authentic Thai massage parlors usually have large windows and prices are clearly visible and the masseuses are clothed and they're not dressed they're not dressed in any way that would be considered sexual. This is about as traditional as Thailand gets and I highly recommend you try it out. However, not every massage parlor is in the business for just a muscle stretch. Some offer a menu with some extra services. Yep. Those are the special happy ending massages, hand jobs, low jobs, etc. And it's no secret that these things happen in Thailand. So if you're intrigued by these special offerings, it's crucial to know the basics. Special massage parlors. These are distinct from the regular ones and usually co located in certain clusters or lanes of popular cities like Bangkok or Pattaya. The entire unofficial industry is rather you know, hush hush, but common in areas like Sui Cowboy or in Yunana Plaza or Pat Pong in Bangkok and near Pattaya's walking street. Then you also have the happy ending massages, happy ending massages, and these are basically massages with a hand job finish at the end, or even full service, which is more than a hand job. And costs vary from place to place, but expect to shell out around 500 baht or more, sometimes even 1500 baht on top of the actual massage. But the actual massage isn't isn't expensive at all. And then we have the soapy massages. This is unique to Thailand and involves a girl using her body to massage you all while you are covered in soapy water or sometimes a gel, which would be a neuro massage. It's certainly an experience of one that's offered in specialized parlors, but you should be ready to splash out two to 3,000 baht or more for this one. Personally, I've tried it. Um, I would just do the regular one. I mean, the soapy massage, a neuro massage with gel. It's something you, you want to try at least once, but I personally didn't find it that exciting. And then, of course, we have the, the normal oil massages. These often start with a traditional massage, but can lead to extras afterwards or, you know, however you negotiate it. And prices depend on what extras you want, but typically, you know, at least 500 baht on top. 
So remember, it's crucial to know what you're getting into. I mean, these parlors are discreet, uh, but not secretive. If you walk into a parlor and see a bunch of, you know, sexy dressed girls shouting at you or grabbing you while you walk past the massage parlor, you're probably in the right spot for a special massage. But here are a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, consent. This cannot be stressed enough. If a girl is uncomfortable providing certain services, never force or insist, respect her decision. Number two, health and safety, carry and use protection. Always, this is non-negotiable. And number three, negotiation. Always negotiate and agree on the price of extras before the services are rendered to avoid any conflicts or misunderstandings or discussions afterwards. These massages are part uh, of the whole Thailand adult entertainment scene and are frequented by many tourists. If you are keen on trying them out, just be respectful, stay safe and enjoy the experience. Next, we talk about the nightclubs, the wild side. Now that we've covered the bars, the go-go bars and the massage parlors, the special ones as well, you're pretty well versed in the adult entertainment landscape of Thailand. But what if you're not in the mood for a quiet drink or a massage? What if you want to really let loose, hit the dance floor, immerse yourself in a lot of music and really party among the locals and tourists alike? Well, buckle up for Thailand's nightclubs are just the right place for you. Thailand's nightclub scene, particularly in the hotspots such as Bangkok, Pattaya or on Bangla Road in Phuket, is all about chilling out and having fun. You have high-end places like Levels uh, in Bangkok, for example. Then you have beachfront open air clubs in Pattaya or Phuket. These clubs, these nightclubs offer you a great way to experience the young, vibrant social life. Uh, and there's lots of Thai people there as well, depending on which club you go to. Here you can expect a night filled with the pulsating beats of EDM, mixed crowds of locals and tourists, especially let's say Kosan Road in Bangkok, and really some truly unforgettable experiences. However, remember while nightclubs are a bit more loose and freewheeling than bars or massage parlors, there are still rules that apply. So let's talk about those rules and the do's and don'ts. So dressing up, many of the best clubs have a dress code. For example, levels would be one of them. So leave your shorts and flip-flops in your hotel room and dress up for the occasion. A neat polo shirt with jeans, chinos, paired with shoes should always do the trick. Number two, respect space. While the clubs come to life with people pushing their inhibitions away, not everyone is out for the same reason. So it's best to respect the space of other people. If approaching someone, be polite and respectful. Um, depending on the club, uh, you know, you, Depends where the club is, and but you don't want to assume that every girl is working or just go up to a group and ask how much. Uh, might just be some local type people out partying and not working girls that you're talking to. And number three, watch your drink. It's always wise to keep an eye on your drink. Drink spiking is not particularly common in Thailand, but it can of course happen anywhere. Nightclubs can be a refreshing change from go-go bars or massage parlors. They bring you somewhere closer to the local population and most importantly, to their renowned hospitality. Be it a relaxed DJ, DJ night or a wild dance party, Thailand's club have you covered. Now the prices in nightclubs can vary considerably. Entry fee usually is free, but in some high-end clubs, you might need to pay a cover charge with, which typically comes with a free drink or, or two drinks. Average cost for a cocktail and glass of beer could be anywhere from 150 to 300 baht. Remember to keep enough cash, enough Thai baht, as not all clubs take cards. And usually it's it's a wise decision, you know, when you're drunk to not use your card or give your card away. Just have cash on hand. And finally, similar to bars and cocoa bars, you will find working girls in nightclubs too. Some could be freelancers, while others could be off-duty bar girls or massage girls. As always, try to negotiate on terms and costs before you leave the club or do anything outside with the girl. So that's really it for nightclubs. Next up, we'll talk about the most popular red light districts in Thailand. So we're gonna unveil the red light districts. Now that we've not navigated through the bars, the clubs, the massage parlors, and have talked about the nightclubs, Let's uncover the heart of it all. The compelling and often infamous red light districts of Thailand. These are areas that are dedicated to adult entertainment and they have they have it all. They have the go-go bars, the beer bars, massage parlors, after-hour clubs, regular clubs. 
Uh, they have everything in between. So let's go district by district. Let's start out with the one that I wouldn't recommend you visit, or the least popular one in Bangkok is Pat Pong. It's infamous, it's famous, because it combines a night market and a small adult entertainment street. It's between Silom and the... Yeah, it's between Silom, it's actually Silom. Uh, and it's like you have Pat Pong Soy Streets 1 and 2 that are home to numerous go-go bars. And then you also have uh, Soy Tania, which is... It looks fancy in videos, but it's really for mostly for Japanese people. I mean, you can try it out if you're not Japanese, but you probably won't like it. It's mostly like drinking with girls, talking with girls, but that's about it, and it's quite pricey. The issue with Papong is that it has a reputation for scams, so that's the reason why I wouldn't really recommend it, and you don't have as much choice as in the other ones that I will mention in just a second. The next one will be it's actually Soy 4, but most people would just call it Nana Plaza. The red light district isn't called Nana Plaza. It's the, the complex, the big building with all the bars inside. But it's synonymous with the red light district. It's claimed to be the world's largest adult playground. Nana Plaza is a three-story compound. It houses go-go bars, beer bars. And you, of course, the famous neon Nana sign at the entrance. The plaza offers really a more hawker version of all the other, uh, especially Pat Pong Rela districts. And upstairs is where the Wyla Gogo -Go bars can be found. So definitely check that out. Next up, the one that I probably like the most in Bangkok, Soy Cowboy. It's named after an American who opened one of the first bars here. It's a little bit less raunchy and, and relatively chilled, has around 40 bars. And this neon lit strip is popular with tourists looking for a lively night. Being close to some of Bangkok's top hotels, uh, close to Asok BTS, close to Terminal 21 Mall, it's really popular with tourists and expats. And if you go to Penny Black, the After Hours Club is also located in Soikawa, and then you can also find lots and lots of local girls that, that go there as well, in addition to the working girls, the freelancers that you will find at that location. And next up, we have Pattaya Walking Street. Pattaya's focal point of nightlife Walking Street is about one kilometer long uh, street packed with nightclubs, go-go bars, beer bars, uh, seafood restaurants. There you have famous, famous bars such as Sapphire, Bacara, Insomnia. Uh, the street gets the, the street becomes a pure walking street post 6 p.m. and livens up with neon lights, loud music, and street performers. And each of these districts, each of these red light districts that I've mentioned, promises a unique slice of Thailand nightlife. They're somewhat similar, but then again, they're very different. However, while, while the, they are places for fun and excitement, these places have the fair share of scams, then you have overpriced drinks and tricky business practices. So remember, your best defense in these areas is to stay alert, check your bills regularly, ideally go out with someone else and not alone, and politely decline any offers that seem a bit sketchy or too good to be true. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. So don't let this deter you though, as long as you've got your wits about you, these places can offer really an unforgettable night of fun. Next we'll talk about how you equip yourself with ways to spot and avoid scams, keeping your nightlife experience in Thailand smooth and enjoyable. So by now you've got a pretty good idea about Thailand's adult scene. Fantastic. But wait, there's a not so pleasant side to all of this fun, which you need to know about. Scams. Uh, individuals might target unsuspecting tourists to make a quick buck. So here's your quick guide to common scams and ways to avoid them. The first one is probably the most well-known and it's the ping pong show scam. You'll find touts promising a great deal for ping pong shows. While it might seem tempting, be wary. These places might lure you in with cheap entry fees or even free shows, but you'll soon find yourself handed a bill with absurd charges for drinks, or special viewing fees. Rather, avoid unless you're prepared to haggle and argue about the bill. Number two, the overcharged drink scam. Always check your bill and keep a tab on what you have ordered. 
Some bars slip in extra charges, hoping that you're too drunk or too busy to notice. Number three, the lady drink scam. Ensure when you order a lady drink, it's for someone you have been chatting with. Some venues might charge you for drinks for the lady you just casually smiled at. Number four, the unwanted companion scam. In some bars, a girl might sit next to you and just start chatting. Before you know it, she's ordered a drink and the bill is on your tab. So politely make it clear that you didn't invite her unless you're okay with paying. And the last one, the bar fine confusion. Clarify the costs before leaving with a bar girl. Some places might charge extra if she's leaving early or if she's one of the more popular girls. So in general, how do you avoid scams? You ask before you order something. Always ask the price before you order a drink or a service or go with a girl. You check bills regularly. Request your bill after each order to be you know, sure about what you're paying for. Always try to settle any disputes politely. If you see an incorrect charge, politely but firmly dispute it. Creating a scene won't help and might get you kicked out or even worse. And lastly, stick to reputed places. Stick to well-known, reputable venues that are less likely to rip you off. Remember, scams can happen, but they're more the exception rather than the rule. Most places in Thailand are legit and just out there to provide a good time and make money. But in general, be aware, be smart, and don't let the fear of scams spoil your experience. So lastly, we'll dive into a particular significant topic, health and safety, while navigating Thailand's nightlife. It's not all serious stuff, but it's worth your attention. So let's keep going. Health and safety are really super, super important when you indulge all of these fun and you know, pleasurable experiences in, in, in Thailand and specifically in Thailand's nightlife. Now we're nearing the end of this video, but before I wrap up, let's there's something important we need to discuss, and that's health and safety while you explore the adults. And it's not as exciting as the other topics, but trust me, it's important and cannot be overstated. So let's break this up into different sections. The first one will be sexual health. Let's call a spade a spade. The adult entertainment scene in Thailand involves a fair share of sexual encounters, usually with bar girls or freelancers or girls from massage parlors. So it's crucial to remain conscious and responsible about sexual health. It may seem like the thunder is being stolen from your party. But practicing safe sex, as I've always said, is a non-negotiable. Always use protection and get regular checkups, or you can also do the checkup at the end of your trip before you go home. That's the most practical option. Second, Alcohol consumption. Thailand's nightlife offers plenty of opportunities to let loose and indulge, but don't get so lost you forget your limits, know your capacity, and if you want to get completely drunk, then at least don't go out alone, do it with somebody you trust. Don't accept drinks from strangers and avoid drinking too much if you're alone. It's not uncommon to get swindled or robbed while you're drunk, although it's, you know, it won't happen for the average person. You need to be really, really drunk and do really stupid things to be a target of that. Now, in terms of personal belongings, pickpocketing exists everywhere, but nightlife areas can be a hotspot simply because people are more relaxed and less aware, especially when you're drunk. Keep an eye out on your belongings. Don't flash large amounts of cash and only carry what's necessary. Now, in terms of drug use, you know, while a thriving nightlife make, might make it appear casual, it seems like there are no limits to what you can do with drinking, with women. Drug laws in Thailand are extremely strict. Purchasing, carrying, or consuming drugs carries heavy penalties, including jail time. So I'd say avoid that altogether. And a word about visiting shadier places. This is especially relevant if you're exploring some of the city's lesser known adult entertainment venues. In general, I would say stick to well known, good places that everybody's talking about those are less likely to engage in dodgy practices or rip-offs. And just in general, to stay safe, a general rule of safety apply in Thailand. I mean, just common sense, basically, just as they do anywhere else. Be wary of overly friendly strangers, look out for common scams, and avoid getting into altercations with locals. Navigating through the, yeah, it's really a maze, an exciting maze of Thailand's adult scene is really, an amazing experience, but 
you know, you should always be smart, be respectful, conduct yourself responsibly, dress up, be well groomed, and above, above all, I would say enjoy the electrifying Thailand nightlife scene. So this is pretty much the end of this video. Uh, let's round it up in a little of a, con a little bit of a, a conclusion, as I might call it. Um, the beginning of this video, we've taken a deep dive into Thailand's vibrant nightlife. Uh, then we've explored the bustling bars, the lively go-go bars, the energetic, well-known, happy ending massage parlors, then the nightclubs, after our clubs, and of course, the red light districts. From understanding the unique rules of Thailand's adult scene to tips on staying safe and avoiding scams, I think by now you should be armed with the knowledge to actually pull the trigger, to navigate the enchanting Thai nightlife. Over everything else, I would say remember this, Thai people are known for their hospitality and the country thrives on tourism. Everything is geared towards tourism. Everything is, yeah, from, from the moment you arrive, super easy to use for tourists, transportation, hotels, whatever, right? All of it, super, super easy. Most people you meet in bars, clubs, even the girls at the massage parlors, or even the girls you take on a date, they're just trying to make a living. So treat them with respect. Keep an open mind and remember, at the end of the day, they're just people like you and I. Thailand's nightlife in all its glory is a world really to experience. You have the dazzling neon lights, music that energizes you, and of course, friendly faces, friendly people. It's an unforgettable journey. So just absorb the positive vibes, respect the host country's culture, and follow the basic rules of caution. Common sense, of course. Whether you're enjoying the company of a beautiful bar girl or you shaking a leg at a banging club, chilling with a, with a chang beer at the local bar, watching people on the street, or you're just unwinding with a traditional Thai massage. I think there's really a place for everyone in Thailand's nightlife scene. So with that, that is the conclusion at the very end of this video and little guide. I hope you found it helpful. If you want something, you know, that goes beyond this video or what I show on my YouTube channel, you can check out the links in the description for bonus videos. Or if you're interested to actually go to Thailand, you can check out my Thailand guide that also comes with travel planning and email consultations included. There's also the Telegram group with over 120 guys. Many of them are actually in Thailand and go out regularly. You can check that out as well. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.